again, Sue here for part two of the bread making for the French bread. Um, right, I just got to confess that yesterday I started making my bread and um, I got really distracted and I couldn't get back to it. Um, and I also found that having it in the kitchen here it didn't rise so I had to take it upstairs to my living accommodation, to my flat. And then they rose loads and I've beaten them back, well not beaten them, I've just, um, well I'll show you what I did, um, and I've, I've pushed it back down again now, and I've done that about four times over the course of um, the 24 hour period or thereabouts, longer than that maybe, but you're supposed to let it rise for three hours. Um, I also found that my yeast, because it was too cold in the kitchen, it wasn't rising, so I had to put it in a much warmer place for it to rise. So just be aware of that, that um, obviously to make it rise, it needs to be in a nice warm location. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't warm enough in my kitchen after leaving it for three hours. It still hadn't risen, um, but now it's, uh, it's risen. I started making another batch as well because I thought it might have been the yeast and then I found that the original batch was starting to rise and the second batch is now rising so I have two lots of um, French bread going on here today. So anyway, so just to let you know what had happened because I told you I've never made this before and I didn't realise you know, you need a really warm kitchen, and this is a catering kitchen. And once you turn the oven off, I've got the oven on at the moment. Once you turn the oven off, it gets very, very cold in here, and it's definitely not warm enough to leave um, bread laying around. I do have several airing cupboards also, but my heating isn't on at the moment, so none of my airing cupboards are warm. So the warmest place was in our flat upstairs. So that's where I ended up putting them right near the radiator so that the bread would rise. And it did rise right where well, you can see it rose up to here. You can see where it rose up to. It rose up to where this line is. And I've just pushed it back down again. It's very, very sticky. It's a different consistency to normal bread. So just be aware of that. It's a lot more of a sticky... Um, consistency all right so I'm just getting it out of the bowl now and also my other recommendation is to cover it up with some cling film um, and if you're just going to leave it in the kitchen for three hours then cover it up with some um, a, a wet tea towel so it doesn't form a crust on the top because that also happened and I ended up having to pick the crust off and then lost some of my mixture so just little trials and error that I'm trying to teach you because I've never made this before so I'm telling you exactly what happens when I was doing it okay so it's a bit wobbly here today so anyway what I'm doing now is oh my god this table right so what I'm doing now is just gonna um put it into three long, well, actually I've decided not to do long baguettes because when I looked it up how to do that, that's quite complicated. It's not as simple as you think. And so I'm going to make them like small, small baguettes, like little ones, instead of having great big long ones because you need like, it's, it's a lot more of a complicated way of doing it. Um, so I've decided to do it this way. So I'm just going to try and make it a bit less sticky. But it is a very sticky um, kind of dough. It's, a def it's definitely very different from normal bread making. Um, next time I'll make normal bread with uh, strong plain flour, but this time I really wanted to try and make French bread. It's really, really, really soft. Um, very, very, very soft consistency. So now I'm gonna break this into three parts. So there's one. There's two, and there's three. Okay, and what you do next is, remember what I said about the flour should not be, I haven't got any cornmeal, but um, Julia Charles recommends using cornmeal for dusting, but I haven't got any, so I'm gonna have to use the flour because you cannot touch it otherwise without getting goo all over your hands. And we're not needing it anymore, so we're gonna just roll these into three sausages so wish me luck with this bit so we're going to do 
free sort of sausages. <laughs> they're not going to be very big because they're only going to be little baguettes because I haven't got a... Um, well, it all went a bit wrong actually. You're lucky that I'm actually still doing this because I nearly just threw it all in the bit. <laughs> I nearly just gave up, but I thought it started to rise and I thought, oh, actually it seems to be rising now. So we'll just carry on. So that's why I'm still back today. So this is day two actually. We're on the second day. We're not on the same day as yesterday. So but I thought I would just show you the truth. Cooking doesn't always go right. It goes wrong, okay? So what I'm doing is just stretching this a bit. It doesn't really need rolling. It's bouncing back a bit. And I'm just going to put it on a tray. And then I'm going to just let it rise again in, in the sausage shape. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't go right. It really doesn't. Just, just as long as you just try doing something different. That's all that matters really at the end of the day. And whatever happens, I'll be able to eat it, whatever. So, even if it doesn't look perfect. So, at the moment, I've just dusted this tray with some flour, right? Because we're going to let them rise again. And hopefully they will in this warm kitchen now. So, we're just going to stretch them out like that. And let them rise on there. So, I'm sort of making... I don't know if they're going to work out. <laughs> but there's one. So I'll just roll out another one and put it next to it. There's a, there's a huge technique to this baguette making. The guy who, who's French, who Julia Childs um, learned how to do this from, I mean, he's obviously a French chef, um, bread maker, baker, makes bread every single day and has the right ovens and techniques and everything. Um, and um, really amazing, makes it look really simple, but it's quite a technique to French bread making, I must say, to making baguettes. They're a lot more complicated than you think. They're not easy, I don't think so. I'm going to break that into two. Oh, that's a bit skinny. <laughs> oh dear, it's all trial and error. So I'm just going to put that back together again because that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it. And try again. So. It's just good to make something new, don't you think? Just try and try and try again is the old motto. When things don't go wrong, right, just keep trying. Don't give up. That's the main thing. Never give up. Never give up. No matter what it is in your life, don't give up. You know, if things don't work out, try something else. I've had several businesses and they haven't all <laughs> worked out, really, not no, but I've never given up and I've always, in my soul, always keep trying and I just hate failing. But failing you learn new things from, but you know, just try. That's all. That's all I can say about life in general is just to keep trying and if you really want to succeed in life, you just got to keep on going, okay? Don't give up and don't make excuses. I mean, you know, just keep doing it until you succeed. And one day you will. My doors are opening again. It's really eerie when they do that. I swear I've got a pol poltergeist here. Me and Simon are always moving stuff, put stuff somewhere, and, uh, and it disappears. Uh, either that or I'm going really senile very early. <laughs> but I swear there's a poltergeist here. I mean, I set all the tables in the um, in the breakfast room, and then when I go back to check, everything's still on the tables. I had knives and forks missing, and spoons and things, and I'm like, where the hell did that go? How did that happen? Uh, I don't know, but. <laughs> It's not scary, but it's just weird how things keep going missing all the time. You put sat down, and then it goes. I had some stuff for my roof on my car, because I've got a convertible, and I bought some special stuff to coat the roof with, and I put it somewhere, bought it, put it in a cupboard, I thought, put it, looked in all the obvious places, and can I find it anywhere? No. It's disappeared off the face of the earth. 
I know we have a lot of places to store stuff in this place, so many places, but I don't know where it's gone. So I'm either going really senile and losing the plot, or something's going on. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I've done that with that one. So I'm just going to have to put that somewhere warm now. So my cooker is on. I had to put the oven on. So what I'm going to do is dampen this tea towel and put it over the top so it doesn't get too crusty on the top, okay? So I'm just going to cover that like that, okay? It might be a bit too wet, but still, never mind. And this is so crusty, but you can see how high it came up to. It came right up here. It was like a big dome. And then I pushed it. Well, what I did was I left it in the bowl because I didn't have um, a clear table upstairs to, to take it out and... And you don't really want to knead it, you just want to pull it and stretch it. So you just keep pulling it and stretching it. And I've done that a few times. Um, so then all the air went back out and then it rose again. And then I pulled it and stretched it again. And I've done that about three or four times. So last night I've done it every time it grew. And then this morning I've done it again. And then I've just done it before I turned it into those. Um, and hopefully they should rise again. That is the plan. Whether they do or not is another matter. We don't know. It's all trial and error. And um, this dough I knocked back a while back, and you can see there's bubbles in it. So we're going to do the same with this one now. Uh, we might as well do them at the same time. So this one has been knocked back. And you definitely need to cover it up because otherwise you get like a hard crust forming on the top, um, which is not very nice. But you're going to lose half your dough because you have to sort of pick it off. This one's slightly different consistency because obviously they're two separate batches with two separate lots of um, yeast. Okay, and make sure your yeast is not out of date as well, because I did notice one batch of my yeast, I, um, the date on it wasn't, um, was a bit old. So that, that would affect your yeast as well, so I threw that away and used a new packet. But keep an eye on things like that, because obviously it's not something, unless you're a great avid um, maker of bread, it's not something that you're going to use that often. You know, so try and always keep your fresh yeast, you know. So I'm going to have to buy some more, I'll order some more today. Because this is just my trial bread, and then I'm going to be making it more of it. Well, I want to make it more, because I like making bread. And I want to make it for my guests, so when I have my guests come, I can put my own freshly made bread out in the morning, which will make life really nice for them and for me because you get a lot of comments and people like it when you do things like that it makes them feel special I like going places if they made fresh bread I'd love it <laughs> you know it just shows you care about your guests people come and stay with you I love my guests so I, I really enjoy having them here um, I never used to like it when I first got here. It was very, very hard work. But now I've grown to really enjoy being hospitable <laughs> to people and having people in my establishment. What is that noise? Oh, it's the dishwasher. I just put it on, didn't I? I wonder what that rattling noise was. It's behind me. It's the dishwasher. <laughs> Anyway, I need to go and find another tray because I've just noticed I've only got that one there. And I don't want to crowd it because I don't know. Well, maybe I should just put them all on the same tray, actually. I'll just move this over. I don't know how these are going to turn out, by the way. I've got no idea if they're going to turn out at all. But I don't put them too close together because we don't want them to because they use special boards and all sorts of special equipment for making this French bread um, baguettes but I haven't got any of that so <laughs> so we're just doing it like this okay and hopefully they have rise I'll let you know you'll know anyway because there'll be another part of this video 
So we're just doing this and we're just rolling these. We're not supposed to use the flour, remember what I said, but oh, it's either this or I can't get them made. <laughs> anyway, that's a very short one. I'm just going to put that one on the tray. I'll put it down the side here. They're probably all mould into one, won't they? And I'll come back and I'll have a big tray all moulded into one. <laughs> what I will do is, um, off camera, I will just go and make sure I've got another tray and I will separate them because I'm a bit worried that once they swell up, if they're too close together, they'll um, they're, they're all, all go into one and that won't be very good, will it? So, this mixture is a bit different to the last mixture. This isn't as... Um, it's exactly the same sort of consistency. It's a bit more springy though, I've noticed. It's a bit more springy. And true bread, um, true um, French bread, bread flour isn't springy like ours. But this, um, this says it's French bread flour, but you know, I don't know if that's true. Because <laughs> when she was making hers, she, she had American flour and that was That was quite springy. Anyway, I'm sure if there's anything, anybody out there who comes knocking on the door, my dog will bark because he's out there. I'll let you meet Genki one day. My little poochie. He's a good guard dog. He always lets me know, but then he, again he lets me know when there's a pheasant at the door, so... <laughs> because we have quite a few pheasants around here and he always lets me know if there's one of them there. And they're my little friends, the pheasants. I usually feed them and they hang around the front door waiting. And I do have some chickens as well. I've got six chickens. I've got three bantams and I've got three normal sized chickens. Uh, right, so... Okay, these are coming, these seem to be quite simple to do this bit. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong, but still, never mind. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. So, we've got to leave these to rise again, so they look like baguettes, okay? This is quite a long process, this bread making. It isn't if you make normal bread or make it in a bread making machine. It wouldn't take like this length of time, but I'm trying... French bread, this is completely different than normal bread. It's a longer technique. And it's not supposed to take as long as I'm taking, but I did have a few problems and um, a few things went wrong. So I had to sort of change tact. But we're back on the case now. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that back on there. And I'm going to wash another... Um, tray because I'm going to separate those because now we've got six six big ones and one little one on there so that's rather a lot um, for this small tray and then we're just going to leave that here I don't know where else to put it so it's got to go here I think this would be warm enough just feel it see if it's warm enough that will have to be warm enough I just have to leave the oven on in my kitchen so it doesn't get cold it's supposed to be 75 degrees or something or sorry about that. It's supposed to be in a really hot kitchen, so I have to keep it hot. So that's what we're going to have to do. And that's that. Right. So I'll be back shortly once my baguettes have risen and I will let you see what they look like. Alright? So see you in a bit.